Greetings! This is Darvain, and welcome back to Let's Play Puerto Espera, where we are watching at this worker who we affectionately know as Worky McWorkface. That's what I've called him. Am I going to subject you, subject you to a whole video of this? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. I mean, in 11 months, we'll get more buildings. Yay! Now, from what I understand from the multiplayer, which beat up, which may be about halfway through by the time this comes out, probably possibly due to close, I don't know if I'll play it. I don't know anyone who else who's got a Perispera to test it with. Um, yeah, basically each player gets their own uh, is their own AI, their own Amy, and they each get their own set of uh, building set, building limit, but they can work together. Uh, they start on different sectors, so it's like having four bases. If you've got four players, I don't know if the bases can join up. But you said you share research. So I definitely put it in the uh, same sort of vein as the co op mode for Hammer Team, which both games, which both games are pretty chill, you know. You're playing it for the hardcore strategy, then well, probably going to be a bit disappointed because there's a lot of scope. I mean, I don't know, I haven't got to the end of the game. This, like I said, I've been playing a lot of this, but this is still pretty much my first run through. I've tested a lot of the beginning, so I know what I'm doing, and that's always fun. That's always fun to play. You lose a couple of hours doing that. I mean, base building on Mars. Yeah, brilliant. I like this idea. The idea of terraforming Mars. The well. The long-term nature of such projects means I'm a bit... Yeah. quite interesting because we're doing black polar dust as an ongoing project to keep replacing it it's not actually doing anything I don't know if we're doing I don't I think it might be because we're not do actually doing enough black polar dust to make a difference because we've actually got more carbon dioxide in the ice caps than we started so we've got two landing sites uh, do we need a third I didn't even see when that went up that's how much attention I was paying 
Um, yeah, we'll have you be able to do another one. So that was that. No extra resources. I haven't got any scanners to find the extra resources around there. Just watch her as you mooch around the uh, this is the, the Hulong base. Sit there charging. Apparently, you got nothing else to do. Okay. Move that, or you just need a good long charge after that. Or oh, that working. that landing thing floating the lander is floating by the looks of it not sure that's how that's supposed to work saying that there is a shadow so might be how it's supposed to work it's just interesting because you can't actually see anything underneath it yeah so yeah so many ants much more scurry around quite interesting because at this scale they're halfway between actually showing what they're holding and the iconic representation which is much bigger than what they're holding <laughs> you can see the outlines it's like they're carrying you know what they're carrying this chunk of iron ore but actually the ghost of it the energy is huge <laughs>
Yes. I mean, that storage is pretty much full up. New colonists have arrived. How's your storage doing? Not quite. So that airship, eh? No, not that airship. Well, that shortened that to nine months, which is okay. It's a shame it takes two years to get more colonists, really. Of course, I know I could put more ships to the project, but that's not the point. After all, I've only got three. Now it's lost power. It's lost power. Okay. Can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about it whatsoever. Well, that's not quite true. I can do something about it. You. Scrap that windmill. Let's watch him scrub it. We've got a belt in.
There we go, that fixes that problem, doesn't it? pretty actually. Although I'm not sure the Martian atmosphere is quite so blue. But what do I know? Five months, it's not bad for that. Wow. Mesmerizing, actually. This is the Certis Major Planum District. 115 buildings, 346 population, and 25 workers. Why would you want to speed this up? And this is the sort of thing that's like, you know what? I want a big screen with this on.
I mean, it's kind of weird that the solar farms come with ba come with batteries, Just, but the wind farms don't. Well, I can sort of understand because there's no sort of regularity to the wind in most cases, so you wouldn't be able to go. Okay, it's 12 hours of wind. It's 12 hours or not. But you could still put a battery in there. What you do is you have you have it so that it charges the battery up, and then it goes to the power grid, or half of what's generated goes to the power grid, and the other half ch goes to uh, charging the battery. Something like that. Um, that case, you at least when the, when the wind drops, you can And the point is, I just don't see the point of wind farms. You see me, you see me now. I just replaced a wind farm with a a wind farm with a solar farm, and it's like, well, I mean, I imagine somewhere quite near the poles is where the trade-off between wind farms and solar farms actually matters. I mean, what's interesting is I'm not usually this vocal when I'm actually when I'm actually playing and not recording. I especially, well, it's been almost two years now since my partner passed away. Still miss her. Quite a bit of change, which, including the fact that I've gone back to doing Let's Plays. Doing Let's Plays has been a has been a lifesaver for me. I think. Stop me from going absolutely crazy. But she used to she used to say she liked to just sit and watch me play. But I was never really vocal, unless it's swearing at the computer. That was when I was getting really vocal. You know, cursing everything under the sun. You know, swearing was a, is a lot cheaper than smashing keyboards. And since actual physical stores have declined in recent times, the ease with which you can go and buy a new keyboard just to smash is and have it there when you need it has kind of diminished. Especially now that Sean's gone as I don't have anyone to drive me anywhere. Which means I'm limited to the places I can get by public transport. So, 
But ooh, did I get through some keyboards in my time. I think I've mellowed and games have become easier, but yeah. I think the worst part was that as a practice of keyboard smashing, however cathartic it was, I had a tendency to do it with um, home computers where it, your keyboard wasn't just a keyboard. Oh no. There is something severely cathartic, although strangely fear-inducing of smashing a Commodore 64 off a wall. Well, or the floor or whatever. Or the smashing it on the desk when the actual base of it is in the keyboard sure you might smash it hard and you might smash it hard enough for a few keys to pop off try not to smash try not to smash it too hard or so the actual it stops working oh Sure, you learn the inside of you learn the inside of um, many home computers that way. Probably wouldn't do it now though. Now I just stick to keyboards because they are literally one board, and that's assuming. I mean, it's. Uh, Depends on the game that I'm playing, really. I mean, the irony is, even if I'm sma even if I'm raging and smashing keyboards, it still shows that I'm engaging with the game. Then there's games like this where you can just sit there and, well. I'm just practice sh sitting here chilling, listening to the plinks. So I'm, ah, oh, I'm engaged. I'm just waiting. Where some games it's like, oh, this is just a chore. It's boring. Why do I even bother? I mean, I'm kind of concerned about the terraforming aspects of the game because of their long scope that there may be parts on this because simply not designed to oh look third landing site notification for that might be nice um, sure we'll have another landing site what else am I going to do with those resources and we let's go and have a look somewhere else shall we See how you're getting on. with the uh, distance blur there. Yeah, 
But yeah. And if anyone's watched me play Stel play Stellaris, you know that there's you quite often so much going on with Stellaris that I never really end up speeding it up. This is why it always fascinates me that you get people play Stellaris and they go, the first thing you do is you put it on the fastest speed and that's the game you play at and it's like why? I mean that's right up there with like skipping the events. I know I've done a that a few times. Once you've known them, you know them. But it's still nice to sit there and immerse yourself now and then. Some people have been asking what's this like compared to surviving Mars. Uh, it's okay, I guess. I mean, they're completely different games from what I can tell. That I've not played a lot of surviving Mars, but. Yeah, you can terraform Mars, but I don't think it. you can terraform it in the sort of scale and time frame that Per Spur is talking about. You certainly, you certainly don't uh, get to create bases over the entire planet, as far as I'm aware. Pretty cool if you did, I guess. And then there's the focus on the colonists. I mean, with the life of the average human being, terraforming happening to, as a process that takes years and years and years. I mean, we're talking decades or even centuries, even. Just won't fit if you were to get any sort of attachment to the colonists here colonists are just numbers providing research which is just numbers which is exactly how an AI would think <laughs> even if commander Ellie I think is definitely in love with us Because we're real, apparently. <sighs> yeah, so this episode has mainly been... When is that due? Four days? Okay, we will pause that out. Didn't realise how quick that was. I will pause it there and we will do this in the next episode. So this has been Darvain doing a Let's Play Per Aspera. If you like what you see in here, especially on my rambling, be sure to like, subscribe, share and comment. Please consider sponsoring me on Patreon. Uh, I don't get paid for doing these videos. I'm not monetized on YouTube yet. And my since the, since the passing, well, I went from being homemaker to uh, just being on my own. And therefore, my only income has been is currently state benefits. So, if you can spare a pound to support me, if you like these videos on Patreon, that would be great. I mean, I don't expect people to, and I don't get a lot. F I don't get a lot from it. Well, uh, to be honest, it feels a lot like begging. Please pay me a pound. It's like, what's the difference from from me being on the street? Please give me a pound, Mister. But yeah, sure. 
and if it's a supplemental income that helps me pay for my uh, humble choice every month which I don't really want to cancel and I've been paying pay anyway because simply because I'm a legacy member and therefore get all the games wouldn't find gems like this even if it's a simple okay play it for a few hours do it a few things enjoy the storyline and then put it away I mean I haven't covered all the games I've played that um, I've enjoyed from Humble Monthly but to be honest most of what I play has either come from Humble Choice or Humble Monthly or well or that I've had some I've had some fun playing games with Epic and or got GOG games obviously. So yeah, I've got an extensive catalogue that's continually growing of games uh, to if, to decide whether I want to let's play them or not. So uh, Patreon does help fund that. Especially if there's like games you'd think I should play or want me to try and let's play and you can let me know. I can look towards picking those up. I and mean, I find in my experience that most of the, the way Humble Choice is going, most of the games come out and then two or three years later once they're done and stabilised, they end up on humble choice which is well actually it's usually a year i mean get per spur for example uh, a year a, a year and then it ends up on humble choice it's like brilliant hammering was the same you wouldn't see gem i wouldn't see gems like that i wouldn't be able to enjoy those it wouldn't even been on my radar i mean some of the games that come up uh I've seen people, other people let's play because I do watch other people let's play um, you can put, you can find pretty much a whole bunch of let's players on my subscription list as well as some other weird stuff I mean everything from Marble Run to Towers of the Underground <laughs> on my playlist well not play on my subscription list you know but yeah I mean I'm surprised because I'm not usually this vocal on Let's Plays and it's mainly because I've not really had to do anything but watch so it's been an interesting different kind of episode this one Anyway, as I was saying, I will leave it there. This has been Darvain rambling over everything while trying to let's play Pertaspera. If you like what you're seeing here, be sure to like, subscribe, share and comment. Please consider sponsoring me for a pound on Patreon. And until next time, goodbye. Mustn't forget to save now. Dum da dum dum dum, and goodbye.